Hey guys, Doug with Nomadic Rifleman. So, I want to take a quick moment today to talk about tourniquets. I'm going to call this uh, dry fire tourniquets or something of the sort. Um, because these, are, so this is a Cat 7 or Cat Gen 7. Uh, it's the, as far as I'm aware, it's the most up to date um, cat tourniquet. Uh, it's TCCC approved. Just when I, this is my most preferable uh, tourniquet because it's the easiest to use and I've had pretty good results with them in training. So, this is one I carried in Afghanistan, so it's, I still use it, but it's not like, I generally EDC a, a soft tee wide because they just get super small, and yeah, so we're going to talk about setup, we're going to talk about deployment, and we're going to talk about practice without using up resources. So this video is specifically for people that are uh, new to this or that haven't had uh, the financial freedom to make, uh, to get it numerous tourniquets let's say they only have one to four tourniquets and they don't want to go through their resources but they want to train with their tourniquets as they should so hopefully this video allows them to go through and hit the what i consider the most important points without actually causing wear on the tourniquet so what causes wear on these and what a lot of people kind of have gripes on are the plastic windlass right here which is the part that you use to get your end goal tightness after your initial tightening of the strap manually so these are plastic and if you train with them over and over and over and over again uh I, there's a potential that you can they can break when you go to actually use them so what people will do is they will purchase real use tourniquets that they do not train with and then they'll purchase um their training tourniquets separately so and then they'll, they'll i what i do with mine is on the time slot where you would normally write the time for the tourniquet, uh, you know, when you apply the tourniquet, I write training. So that way I see it, I can be like, don't use this on my kit. This is a training tourniquet. Use this for practice, right? Or training or whatever. So today we're going to talk about setup of a tourniquet, how you should have it set up. We're going to set it up wrong so that you can see that. And then we're going to go through and set it up right. Now with all this stuff, guys, keep in mind, I'm not the person you should be getting your uh, trauma medicine or trauma training or whatever you want to call it from. Uh, there's plenty of people on YouTube that do this stuff. This is like their living and they do this stuff specifically on YouTube. They specifically focus on the, uh, on trauma medicine. And then there's people uh, that do this training in real life. There's uh, stop the fleet courses. There's uh T triple C classes or CLS or combat lifesaver training. I really highly recommend seeking out qualified instructors with firsthand experience in the subject to be taught this stuff. This is simply a video on training with limited resources. That is it. Don't take it for anything more or anything less. So here's a way that you don't want to store a tourniquet. Uh, having it completely wrapped up like this, not prepped at all. It's completely wrapped up. Windless is all secured um, and all that. This is super wrong. Now I do personally put my windless in the clip just because it kind of helps it kind of helps uh, police it up a little bit. Then I open up my loop. And again, this is what I do. If someone gives you advice that seems better, uh, whatever, that's fine. Uh, I like to have a little four inch or so grab handle. So that way I have something nice and thick to, gr uh, to grab onto for my initial tightening. And then I open up my loop all the way so that it's at the most it can be opened without going onto the loop. And then I take this and you wanna verify that it will fit over whatever, whatever is your thickest length. Most people that'll be your legs uh, if you skip leg day all the time and you go to the gym pretty often, maybe it's your arms for you, whatever. For me, it's my legs, so I'm going to verify that it does indeed get up nice and high on my legs, which you can probably see right here that it indeed does. Hopefully you could see that. If not, uh, it's up on my high thigh area. So anyway, once you've verified that, blow your dust off of it and you're going to go ahead and stow your tourniquet. What I do personally is I take my windlass and I seat it in there and I put it vertically. Some people say that's bad, very well might be. Um, if you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. You're gonna wrap this up, pull this down, and you're now, you now have a stowed tourniquet that can be put in your pouch or wherever you keep your tourniquet. So when you, when you need this tourniquet, I don't have kit on, so I'm just gonna pull this from my super high speed tactical pouch. You're gonna open it up, deploy your loop, you're gonna verify, so let's say it's left leg, 
Hopefully you can see this. Ah, uh, let's adjust this. So I've already deployed the tourniquet. We're going to adjust this a little bit so that you can see what I'm trying to show you. Verify that you can see. All right, you should be able to see this. So you're, you've deployed your tourniquet. You're going to now put it over the affected limb. We're going to say left leg. You're going to make sure that nothing's in the pockets getting in your way. And then you're going to make sure that you've applied it with the tail, or the free tail of the tourniquet, running towards the in, running in to, onto the uh, inside of your body. So basically running like that. You don't want it running the other way because then you're pulling out of your body. That's super awkward and not ergonomic, so to speak. Uh, it's bio biomechanically incorrect, you might say. So make sure it's going towards the inner part of your body. And you want to have this thing nice and high and tight, right up next to your, uh, you know, your crotch region. And you're gonna take this and you're gonna wrench it down as tight as you can get it. You're gonna fully secure it, and then you're gonna start tightening. Now you're not going to start tightening the windlass because this is the item you don't want to be causing stress on. But you can see right here that the tourniquet is exceptionally tight. Okay, you can you can barely even get a finger in there. Um, like, and I haven't even touched the windlass yet. This is the part people mess up from what I've seen. Uh, in CLS training and things like that. Um, this part right here is a critical performance piece. If you mess this point up, the rest of it's gonna be pretty much completely dicked up. So at this point, you should only require two, maybe three turns on, of the windlass to achieve full artery cutoff. If you find yourself twisting on a tourniquet and you have you know a big old mound of knots underneath of it, you messed up your your initial tightening was not sufficient. You need to get the, the initial tightening extraordinarily tight so that you only need to put a couple of uh, rotations on your windlass. And it, as I say later on, uh, it's approximately one turn past mf -er is sufficient. Uh, or more importantly, when you're not in training, when the bright red bleeding stops. So that's how I go through my tourniquet dry fire, so to speak, uh, without putting a, a, any stress on my windlass, which is the which is the point that uh, people have failures with. Um, I still highly recommend a getting training tourniquets so you can go through the full procedures, and b making sure you seek out that instruction from qualified individuals. There's all kinds of people out there that that are that have firsthand experience in trauma and we'll, are willing to share that knowledge and experience with you to make sure you're set up for success. So again, I'm not the guy to get it from, but I hope this has been helpful. Y'all have a great day. Mm, one more thing before we go to the, the last bit. Um, don't just do this like comfortably like I'm doing right now. Apply this stuff to your dry fire practice. Apply this stuff to everything. Uh, when you're going out and you're like, oh, hey, like I'm working dry fire runs or whatever, uh, start working in some medical stuff. Start working in uh, your tourniquet drills and things like that into and incorporating them into your other training. Uh, don't only do this stuff when you're comfortable. Do it under nods. Do it under uh, in the in the dark. Do it whenever you have the opportunity to do it. So that way, this stuff is supernatural and and you know subconscious for you. It's not something you want to be figuring out. The, like the first time you're you do put one of these on when you're in full kit shouldn't be when you have an actual trauma incident. You know what I mean? So make sure you're getting out there and actually practicing with the stuff, not just in your living room, but getting out and actually doing it. All right, uh, we'll roll to the next part. I hope this guy is, uh, ugh, I hope this has been helpful for y'all. Have a good day. Hey guys, Doug really quick. So if you guys found this information helpful, I would really appreciate you guys taking a moment to like, share, and subscribe my, con uh, like and share my content as well as subscribe to the channel so that you get follow or you get notifications whenever I post more videos. Uh, if you guys find this stuff uh, informational, uh, ugh, informa <laughs> informationable. If you guys find this stuff informative, please let me know. Uh, if you guys find some stuff that you critique or that you think I did wrong, please let me know below. This is all in the hopes of me and you learning together through this process as we become better riflemen. So if there's anything you notice that I'm doing strangely or I could do more efficiently, please let me know because I really, really do want to learn through this channel. Um, if you guys see stuff you like or you guys have any recommendations, feel free to reach out to me at, uh, on email. The email is the same as what my YouTube channel name is, just at gmail.com. Uh, feel free to reach out with any recommendations, questions, or really anything at all. 
Um, yeah, so it's been, oh, and again, I can't, I really can't encourage you guys, if you don't have instruction uh, with Combat Lifesaver, TCCC, uh, Stop the Bleed courses, things like that, please go out and get that instruction. It's critically important. So this stuff is something that you really, really do need instruction on. Like with shooting, you have the recoil, you see the targets. It's, it's something you can kind of manage on your own. Uh, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and money and heartache uh, going and getting instruction, but you can kind of figure it out. Uh, medical stuff really isn't that way. Um, unless you're just going out and shooting stuff and then trying to fix it, which I don't recommend for legal and moral reasons. That's probably not the right answer, but really guys, there's some very, very nitty gritty stuff that an instructor will really help uh, hone your experiences on and make sure you're doing stuff right. Cause it's really easy to think you're doing something right in, in the medical, uh, part of this and be doing something critically wrong. Um, and it's something you really do need a qualified uh, instructor with good first-hand experience in the subject to be able to point out what things are wrong, why they're wrong, uh, what things are right, why they're right, and then set you up for like legitimate success should you ever find yourself in a situation involving trauma. Uh, this is not something you want to be figuring out. Um, one thing I do want to I want to add to this video: uh, proper tightness. This is a quote from uh, Bear Bear Independent. I really like this. Proper tightness on a tourniquet is approximately one turn past mother effort. It's pretty much correct. Uh, when it starts hurting, you're pretty close. Uh, like when it starts really hurting, not like, oh, that's kind of uncomfortable. Like tourniquets hurt, they're supposed to. Um, and then guys, really, it's it's critical. Get some instruction. There's some great people out there. Um, I know I know Bear Independent apparently has a, a super high speed instructor down in the Oklahoma area. Um, I'd recommend checking them out. There's all kinds of resources that I'm not the guy to point you towards them. Uh, there's skinny medic and all kinds of other YouTube channels that do that, that this is their thing. I just wanted to give this little clip into how you can train or practice with your, with what resources you have. That's, that's all this video is. Anyway, guys, if you found this helpful, like I said, feel free to share, subscribe, like, etc. all that fun jazz. This has been nomadic rifleman because everywhere deserves good and capable riflemen ready to treat and apply trauma in the field. Y'all have a great day.